I'm Anna Sterner. I am the Director of Learning Programs at the Michigan Science Center. Um, we are home to some really fun exhibits and fun things that have to do with games, um, but we're also really excited to be partnering uh, with UN for an upcoming game night that kind of merges the science and technology side of games with the mental health benefits that they can offer. Hi, everybody. I'm Marlon Tate. I'm the uh, Social Media Strategist here at uh, Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network. I'm an active gamer here. been gaming since I was like three years old. So this is a great topic for me to, you know, touch on. So I'm excited to get into the thick of the conversation. Yeah, I can, I can tackle that a little bit is that, um, you know, there's kind of this perspective about games um, is that games are frivolous and that they are just something that is fun. Um, and I think sometimes that's a perspective that people who don't play a lot of games um, kind of have from the outside. Um, but gamers, uh, people like Marlin um, and people who enjoy playing games and not just video games, really any kind of games, is that there are a lot of benefits to playing games. Um, at the Science Center, we talk a lot about how games can help to teach STEM skills, things like problem solving, things like spatial thinking. Um, and all of those skills are really important um, for school performance. They're really uh, important for just any career that you might pick, you'll always have to solve a problem, is that games are a really low stakes way of practicing some of those skills, you know, because there's no consequences to doing them wrong. You can restart your level, you can play another round, um, you know, you can always improve on those skills. And so um, regardless of what type of game you'd like to play, um, the benefit really is, is kind of helping you to practice skills in an environment that is meant to be fun and also really meant to be um, rewards based as well. I actually do play a lot of either like RPG or adventure games to kind of like help me de-stress because it kind of puts me in like a, I'll say like a whole other world in a sense. So for like example, I like I'll play like Star Wars Jedi uh, Survivor, um, where it's like it's it's, title, it's a Star Wars game, so you're gonna be pretty much in a completely different universe. Um, and that game is filled with like a lot of different like puzzles. It's not just all like you know get out a lightsaber and you know explore the galaxies like in those different planets and everything like that. You go through and like actually like solve puzzles. You get to find um, like chess pieces and stuff like that. And you kind of have to like really strategically figure out a way to like get to these like chess boxes. So it's not always just like oh, all you have to do is like go straight and you'll hit like a chess box. You have to like strategically figure out a way to like get to these places if you have to use like your force abilities um, or just even just your natural just like brain power just to figure out like how am I going to get up there? I have to like double jump and use like my force abilities and different things like that. So that that definitely helps me like, you know, de-stress because like you said, it's a low stakes kind of thing where if I don't get it, well, I could just move on to the next thing. It's kind of like a side mission where I can like choose to do it or I don't. So it helps me just kind of like de-stress. Like I don't have to pick every choice that's in front of me. It gives me multiple options. So, you know, I can go this way, this way, this way. You know, if I don't get it down, down this route, I can go down a different way, but still get the same outcome. I, I am not a true gamer. I don't play a lot of games like that. It sounds really cool. I love the Star Wars movies, so maybe I should give it a try. But um, I, I do want to disclaim for anyone listening who says, you know, I, I don't play those kinds of games is that number one, you should challenge yourself. You should you should try these sorts of things because you can get good at them. Um, but I think really the, the common thread between uh, games and stress reduction is that games require your full attention, um, especially video games, is that you are using both of your hands, you are watching, you are oftentimes listening, um, and you can't really focus on more than just the game. And so, you know, it may sound stressful, I think, to hear about a new game and, you know, having to understand all these rules and that it's going to, you know, throw puzzles or, you know, a lot of games you have to, like, fight something. And that that may seem stressful, but um, I think about, you know, days when I have just, like, a hard day and hard days happen, um, you know, that's part of life, is that playing games actually helps to keep your mind off of that. It can also help to kind of stop you from flashing back to maybe some of the stresses or trauma that you experienced earlier in the day. And the really cool thing about games uh, like the ones Marlin plays, or even if you're into more simple games, like I really love games like Candy Crush. Um, it's really repetitive, but it still requires my full attention is that that can also help your brain to stop committing some of those more stressful or traumatic, traumatic memories into your long-term memory. And 
Um, that's kind of research that's proven across the board, but with particular games, on um, particular games like Tetris, for example, um, have really incredible mental health benefits um, that help people to, number one, reduce stress while they're playing, but also prevent um, anxiety and prevent post-traumatic stress disorder, um, especially for people who maybe have experienced something very stressful or very traumatic. That's a good one. And I, I, th I have a feeling that, you know, especially parents uh, really are interested in knowing the answer to this question, particularly parents who maybe don't play a lot of games themselves and are really kind of that bystander. You know, they're thinking, you know, my child is, you know, locking themselves in their room and, you know, they're not being social or they're all they care about is this game is that, um, you know, disclaimer, you know, like there is definitely a line between, you know, how much gaming is too much gaming. Um, and I think research actually shows that that line is about 20 hours per week, is that there's actually very, very little research or studies shown that there are harmful effects to gaming if you play less than 20 hours per week, which is quite a bit of gaming. So that can, you know, over the course of a week, you know, that's a few hours a day. Um, of course, the line for everyone will be a little bit different. Um, I think that one of the things that I would keep a close eye on is loss of sleep. Um, loss of sleep is really um, one of the biggest things that contributes to kind of the negative aspect of gaming is that, you know, you may be able to fit in 20 hours a week, but if you're only playing during the hours that you are supposed to be getting a good night's sleep, there are going to be consequences the next day. There's going to be deficits to how well you can pay attention, your social battery, um, your attention for school, and just your time that you need to be able to complete all your other tasks outside of work. So, you know, that 20 hours should not uh, replace things like doing your homework or talking to your family or talking to your friends or completing chores or tasks that you need to do is that if you notice that games are taking up that time, then games are really being used as more of, like you said, an unhealthy escape rather than uh, a healthy escape to help you kind of decompress and build skills. I'll pick I'll pick two because I, I'm like I'm like on the fence. So I will say that like one game that I think is really cool, especially if you're interested in like engineering type fields or engineering type activities or even just like the process of engineering, is that there is this game called Portal. Um, and it is really good for um, like spatial thinking is that um, you basically have um, a blaster that creates portals and there's two different portals that will lead to each other. Um, so to try to get to like different objectives or different doors, you have to like walk through a portal that will exit out where you put the other side of the portal inside the game. Um, and it's one of those things, it is, it is very frustrating in a way, but um, it's one of those things where you can try it, you know, a hundred times in like a few minutes because you're just trying every single option. Um, but it's really good for helping to understand like the physics of how that would work too. It's like a very physically accurate game, which is not always the case with video games. Sometimes the whole point is that it's like this super fantasy, you know, environment. And those are super cool because it helps us to uh, like think about what physics might be like in other environments, like especially off of Earth, which is super cool to think about. Um, but uh, Portal is really rooted in like the physics of Earth and how those things would work if we had something like a portal gun. Um, but I think like if you're looking to de-stress, um, I'm going to circle back to Candy Crush. Um, it's old. Everyone's played it. Um, some people don't love it. But um, it's one of those things where if like my mind is racing and I can't sleep or my mind is racing and I just need a minute to chill out, um, I can play a couple quick rounds. I feel really accomplished at the end once I've beat a level, um, especially if you replay like a really simple level. But it really takes like all of your attention for like the few minutes that you play. Um, and it's really good for if you just need like a couple minutes of reset. It doesn't really like suck you in for a long period of time um, as long as you're careful. Animal Crossing would be a, a very, I played it a couple of times and I would say that Animal Crossing game is like very, very peaceful where you kind of build up your own like community. So anything like Animal Crossing or like Sims. You know, for me, it's that um, I wouldn't put a barrier between like a healthy relationship with your child and then your child's relationship with games is that, you know, even if you don't necessarily want to sit down and like actively play the game with them or like learn how to play the game is that um, you can sit down with them while they're playing the game. And one of the best skills that they can practice is communication is if you ask them questions like, how did you figure out how to do that? And letting them explain to you the process that they went through helps them to kind of cement those steps into their memory.
So we actually have a game night going on at the Michigan Science Center on December 1st from uh, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and it's going to be jam-packed with a lot of different things. So we're going to be pretty much having the same conversation about the, you know, the bridge between mental health and gaming. Um, we're going to have a lot of our, a couple of our cl clinicians there from uh, from D-Win there, uh, also driving the conversation a little bit further. Um, but it's not just going to all just be about, you know, this talk. And we're going to have a lot of activities, a gaming tournament, uh, social media challenges. Um, and we're also going to have like an art therapist there and doing some like art therapy workshops as well.